Dune Part 2 is coming out in just a few days. And I have a lot of thoughts for this one. So let's jump into the review of that right now. What's up, everybody, and welcome back to the channel today for another review. And today, we're going to be reviewing the new film, Dune Part 2, coming to theaters March 1st. So, let's just start off with the biggest disclaimer of them all. I had not seen Dune Part 1. And in all fairness and full transparency, I tried to watch it on Netflix, which is available now. I think it's going to be leaving in a few days, but it was boring. <laughs> I just couldn't, I just couldn't stay awake. I was struggling and I don't know if it's just the comfort of my home or what, but it just was a really tough struggle to get through. So I got through just about 20 to 30 minutes and then that was it. But I knew the screening for Dune 2 was on the way. Dune Part 2 was on the way. Um, and I wasn't going to miss a chance to check out this film because there were definitely some boxes checked for me even before seeing the first one that I knew I would enjoy with the second. And easily, easily a chance to see it in IMAX and a score behind Zimmer, which you don't have to even ever not expect to get a banger out of Hans again. He delivers, he delivers, he delivers. And this score in this one was just fantastic. But I'll be honest, to have seen the first 20 minutes of the first one and going into this one, I didn't feel like I missed anything. I know it picks up immediately afterwards because everybody said it, but I think you could come into this one not seeing the first one and still overly appreciate it. And without a doubt, this one was far from boring. It was long. It was definitely long, and it was a little bit of a struggle because of the, the, the runtime, but it was wall-to-wall -wall action, and the visuals were just something special. And to be fair, I seen it in IMAX, which I would highly suggest is the only way you want to see this because when it comes down to the visuals, getting the best definition, and then getting the best sound, it, it, this is the perfect film for it. But it was loud. I mean, I left with a major headache because the film was so, so loud, but the visuals were so, so good. And when you even get down into some of the actions, like I thought the CG, the CGI was, was done well. There was times where it was like kind of over the top, but there was other times that was just done very, very good. Um, when you talk about the explosions, the, you know, bullets flying and everything, you know, yes, all that was good. Um, but then there was a couple of particulars I thought that was like very, very well. Now, as a kid, I was damn sure scared of that film, Tremors. <laughs> so seeing these sandworms was definitely a little bit triggering in this. Um, but like, man, it was so it like aesthetically pleasing. Uh, the sandstorms, the sandworms, the designs of them, them riding on it. All of that was so cool. Like, I almost to the point where I may be able to watch Tremors now and just be okay because just seeing a lot of the sandworms in this and just seeing how they were, like, really done and um, and how cool they made them look at times, I was like, you know what? I can get behind this. Um, so, yeah, a, a lot with the sand stuff was really, really cool. Um, again, most of this film takes place in um, a, a sand environment. So, you know, I thought they, they really, really brought the visuals in terms of uh, of that backdrop and, and, and even with the CGI and really bringing us the viewers into these storms with, with the, 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 the film. I thought they did a really good job with that. Um, they also really nailed some like low light illusions. You know, those shots of you can tell folks are like coming through the shadows or, you know, stuff like that. Uh, almost to the point of it's almost like, um, like, um, you know, it, it, it almost gives you like that eerie feeling because you know something's coming. Um, but the way how they did it, I just thought they did this, did it very, very well. Like folks coming out of the shadows was done super cool. And then like, I mean, as your lead here in Timothy uh, Chalamet, uh, as Paul, I mean, they made him a true action star. They was giving him all the shots. That was just so, so cool, you know. Um, so, nonetheless, cinematography was very good. I thought the visuals in terms of the CG, uh, CGI and everything was done 
uh, very well as well, too. Uh, the score was good. And then the acting. I mean, down, up and down the board, the acting was very good. I, I, I you know, I think it's very easy to say a Timothy as, as your lead. Um, definitely impressed. Him and Zendaya, you know, as Paul and Shawnee, uh, the two of them, their, their love angle, but also, you know, the conflict between their love because their love is totally tested in it. Um, yeah, very, very good. Austin Butler is fantastic in this. And, I, you know, I want to make sure that he gets enough love because I think it's very easy to, to key on the leads to forget that one of our antagonists, uh, Austin, man, he, he's he's great in this. I would even go as far as saying that Christopher uh, Walken has some moments that are very special. And, I mean, his voice is so commanding. That, you know, whenever he talks, you just automatically buy into whatever his character is, is, is selling. And then Florence Pugh, very minimum time, but also execute at a high level for what she's needed. But up and down, the, the performances was good. I don't think that really anybody was a, a, was a drop off. I think characters, um, even with some minimum time, was really able to, like, draw your attention. Um, But, uh... You know, to kind of go a little bit back about the cinematography, there's particular moments in which in the film it's the black the black sun scene. So the film is then now shot or displayed in black and white. I love it. I just absolutely love it. I, I love a good noir, the feeling behind it, the visuals, like that moodiness with it is done super good. Um, I, you know, I think about when I think about some of the classics that do this, I think like the scenes that they shot in black and white in this definitely has to be talked about amongst that because they were definitely done at a top tier level. And then to go back also to the action, I'm just circling around a little bit here. Um, the fight choreography was done good. And I also love one thing about this film that a lot of films don't do is they really avoided the hero's complex. Like fights got right to business. It was a fight, somebody lost, on to the next. It wasn't all the dramatics of building up for the next fight. These fights were like, <laughs> much like fights to the death. And they that absolutely made sure that that's what they were. But I, I again, I love the fight choreography. To kind of give you a little bit of a hint here, Austin and Timothy, they have a fantastic fight in the third act. Um, and I'm, I almost want to feel confident to say they did their own work. And if they didn't, the stunt actors did what they were supposed to do. But if they did, I mean, that's got to be noted as very impressive for the actors to really show up in that light. Because, you know, whether they were trained to do it or whether they have a background in it, um, to still execute in the way they did was really stellar. Like, there's no other way to put it. I, I was really digging the third act in the hand-to-hand -hand fight choreography. They really, really nailed it here. Um, we get a Brolin, Josh Brolin versus Dave Batista fight. Little bit of Drax and Thanos reunion there. <laughs> um, I'll just leave it at that. You know, all my Marvel fans there, you know, you gotta have a little bit of Marvel fun in these films. Um, but, uh, yeah, you know, with the first two films, I know being shot at the same time, you know, this film definitely, uh, is setting up for a third film and whenever it comes out maybe they're going to take a look and see what this film makes um at the box office and i think it should do very well i think a lot of people are very excited for this film but again for if you had not seen the first one i think you're perfectly okay coming into this and just really appreciating the art the story is the story and, and the story is truly about paul but it's paul and shawnee and their and their love relationship that's tested because Paul has a greater purpose here. And with the greater purpose of really, um, in, in a sense of revenge against his family, he also is trying to really step up as like the next leader um, as he decides that he's going to challenge all of the great houses and either they buy in or not. And with the war potential looming around that, you know, he wants to be the leader um, that, 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 you know, that takes everything to, to the future. And if by doing so, would that jeopardize his relationship with Shawnee here? So, you know, little stuff like that. So again, I, I mean, in lamest terms, Paul is looking to be the man 
and he's going to have to fight a lot of people to do so. And either they either buy in or they get out the way. And that's essentially what it is. So uh, simple plot in my eyes, um, you know, him really understanding his purpose, him being tested, you know, him being the chosen one and, 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 the, and the prophecy that's 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 told about him and everybody, you know, Sometimes they're kind of so, sometimes they're not, but he's making everybody a believer is the journey here. And Charlie's his biggest supporter, his love, but, you know, she also don't take any from anybody, you know? So understanding that, like, we're going to see a performance by Zendaya that just makes her far from a pushover or love interest or just, you know... Um, waiting for her white knight to save her. Far from that, a very strong character that I really can't wait to see the potential of what this character does going into the next film. And honestly, even after watching this, I don't even feel compelled to go back and watch the first one. Like, I get it, the whole situation with Paul and his dad, because they they very much highlight it in this. And they, you know, a lot of references in this film points back to events in the first film, so you can kind of fill in the, the blanks there. Um, but like, here, with the second one here, action pack from beginning to end um and, and i think if that's what you're looking for instead of like the first one sort of laying down the foundation i would assume laying down the plots you know introducing us to the characters understanding the conflict within uh the different houses here cool but this one definitely is like now that we got that all done let's get to business and that's why for its runtime of two hours plus you know you absolutely are getting wall to wall action. Um, looking at the runtime, an hour, I mean, excuse me, 167 minutes here. So, you know, it, it, it seems a little bit of demanding, but I think it's totally worth it considering that you're going to get a lot of special things. And for what it's worth, the visuals and the score is worth the ticket of mission in my eyes alone. So, without a doubt, Check out Dune Part 2. I know a lot of you all are already hype about this. Very excited to check this one out. I got to say, coming in here, not have watching the first, not knowing much about the lore, um, I had a good time. I really did. It was moments where it was a little dragging and certain scenes probably could have been condensed. But for what it's worth, when things were low and things wasn't moving, immediately the action picked up. The, the the bullets are flying explosions left and right sand storms you know they they just they they hit on all cylinders to make sure that you were re-engaged man was it loud so i very much conscious of you that you want to come in there and make sure you are um being prepared to have your eardrums tested because certainly this is a film you only want to see in IMAX. But yeah, folks, anyway, get in the comments. Let me know your thoughts about this when you check it out. And as always, stay tuned for more reviews very soon.